Hi, and welcome to Biostock Studio, where today we will be listening to a presentation from Aftahem and CEO Mikkel Lindstam. Welcome, Michael. Thank you so much. And thank you for you watching me today. I'm Michael Lindstam, and I'm the CEO of Aftahem. And today I will give a little uh, look back on the 22 that we just almost passed, and also where we are right now with the company, and a little forward looking. So hang on, let's go. So for you that doesn't know Aftahem too much, the mission of Aftahem is to develop aptamer-based drugs with focus on severe inflammatory conditions that have no effective treatments today. And our lead candidate, as you can see visualized on the right in its package, is developed uh, towards critical care. And it's designed to prevent damage of organs and tissues in sepsis and septic shock patients. So I promised you a little uh, look on 22 and here it comes. So, Milestones reached, and there are plenty of them, I can tell you. We made a fantastic GMP production, which is mandatory to have your substance in clinic. We excelled those results with much higher yields, and we managed to keep costs even lower this time. We also had a GLP talks and safety package that was finalized. It's huge. It was over 6,000 pages long. Amazing, really. High safety we have with our dry candidate, APTA1. Formulation has been ongoing and also fill and finish, and that is ready now, so it's being shipped to our clinic in Holland that it will be used. We also have uh, summoned a really, really good team to take the challenge now with the clinic and also look at further company growth ahead of us. And all these uh, milestones achieved, we have created a fantastic regulatory package, and that went through with very little comments from the EFIC uh, and, and uh, uh, regulatory authorities in Holland where we will do the clinic and that means we are in clinic one now and we are doing recruitment as we speak and we're looking at the first uh, um, administration in uh, December so hold on and follow us where we are and talking about that with all these results we have achieved we also have expanded our data room to make it really interesting for those who are interested in licensing or or in a partnership with us and not to forget we have a new homepage go out and check it so you will find a lot of interesting new things. And also, if you have any comments or ideas, please uh, contact us and we will uh, listen to you as well. Well, talking about aptamers. Well, we have three different aptamers. Well, APTA1 is our lead candidate. But what's the advantage with aptamers? Yeah, we compare them to antibodies, but they're smaller. And being small, you can reach specific targets that antibodies may not reach. And how do you make these aptamers? Well, you can see at the Lego parts there, it's like building bit by bit around the target. And that's the big advantage. It's also synthetically made. So you can reach targets that no other um, uh, drugs can do, for example, and also have high efficacy on those targets. Very good. And because they are synthetically made, they are also free of any immunotoxic Ecology, uh, parts, which is a very big advantage when you develop drugs like this. Uh, well, I mentioned in the beginning, there is a problem, or we call it a problem, is that, that in Europe only, sepsis kills 450,000 people per year. That's almost 40% of those who get struck by sepsis or septic shock. It's an enormous amount of people. It's a very severe condition. We don't say sickness because it's a lot of different sicknesses that occur during a sepsis event. Anyway, it costs society a lot and the uh, eco burden is 30 billion per year euros in the whole Europe. And that is an enormous figure and it spills down from families, work comrades, the whole society is suffering from this. So we need to do something and we have the solution. I already mentioned this solution, APTA1 and all its advantages. I just want to mention that what makes APTA1 so special is its multifunctional behavior in the organism. Because we have an anti-thrombotic, anti-inflammatory, and a tissue repairing, as well as a protective effect on the inside of the vascular, endothelial protective. And toxicity we talked about now, and now we are in clinic. Fantastic. So what about APTA1 then? Well, I will not go too deep in this, that's not for me. I have other people in the organization that are very skilled. But in general, we can see that APTA1 selectively binds to thrombin, which is our target, selectively. That means on only one point, I will soon come back to that. And in that capacity is to activate uh, uh, platelets, which we stop then, of course. And this is 
typically first respond to biostress when platelets are activated. So we are there at the first moment of an inflammatory response in the body. Amazing. So if you look at the mid picture, you can see the uh, uh, platelet there being um, attached to, or the opposite, attached by, by different uh, pars. And this is the key for APTA1 when it works on few of them. So if you look now on the next, Picture here, you can see that we have a first-in-class mode of action due to its fan fantastic multi-behavior. And if you look at the left, you see thrombin, the target that I mentioned. It only, after that one, only targets exercise two, only. And that makes it very unique. And to our knowledge, there's no, nothing else out there doing that at the moment. There are other sites thrombin can be attacked, but when you attack maybe wrong word, but inhibit them, you are bound to have side effects. And the most common when you're working with anticoagulants, for example, it's bleeding. We don't ha have that and we don't see that. So all in all, if you look at this, only one point, we have a healthy system working, but we have also immediate rapid anti-inflammatory and anti-thrombotic response by inhibiting this part. Amazing. So no activation places, but there are other processes activating them that doesn't have the side effect. Fantastic, really. So our value proposition. This is a fantastic drug candidate with a huge unmet need. And here you see at the left some of the advantages. I will not go through them again. I can only mention, mention for you that it is a fast acting drug. You inject it in a critical situation. Fantastic and it goes fast. And the stakeholders involved in this are, of course, the physicians that want to save as many patients as they possibly could. And for society, we just mentioned it before, 30 billion euros per year it costs. This is something we need to work on, not only for the person who suffer, but also for society in general, of course. And last but not least, the pharma industry. These are the takers that we are approaching to carry our drug candidate all the way to market one day, which we're really working hard to uh, make believe. But to have a partner, you need to protect your asset, and that we do through patents. We have two patent families. And the first patent covers the free APTA method. We have one, two, three, and where APTA one is the one we work on. And that has also spun out in a second patent family for APTA one, which covers a lot of indications for therapeutic use. You can go in uh, in the public domains and look at this, and you can find uh, yourself interested in this and, and see how, how wide it is. I, I really urge you to do that if you're interested. Anyway, if there were not competition, we would not be here either. So there must, need, uh, must be a, a, a need for this. And we see this from other, uh, and here's some famous pharma companies working into different phases of a sepsis drug. Please notice the mid columns, coagulation, inflammation. These are the two areas that you need to target with a sepsis drug. If you notice very carefully now, you see that these other candidates target either inflammation or coagulation. We target both, but please note, it says antithrombotic. The coagulation part is the downstream effect of the antithrombotic effect that we see. And also on the far right, you can see the target population. And we see a potential to be able to target all that uh, uh, population that will be struck of sepsis. We see that as a potential. Clinic will of course show us in the future. Oh, huge target market that goes without saying because the unmet need is huge, there's a big interest and there's many incidences. This is figures from 2020 and I will not go through them, but you can see that we are targeting a multi-billion US dollar. And this is a few countries in Europe and the US and the Japan. So the market is huge. And that is of course a triggering part for the potential uh, partner that we are seeking. So. Now, an outlook, tentative timelines, in the best case, of course. We always should make the best case and then we work hard to, to deliver it. And we have three big parts we focus in the company. It's the clinical study, which I will soon go through. We have the partnering and business development constantly with us all the time. And we're also now increasing further uh, to seek out key opinion leaders to support our, our goal to reach market with this fantastic dog. And of course, the scientific process, because we generated so much data that is so unique ourselves and together with the partners that we are working with, scientific ones. And so that will uh, crystallize in some really interesting publications that we are looking forward to, to present for you as soon as possible, of course. So back to the timelines. Now we are in the end of 2022. We will 
um, give the first dose in uh, healthy individuals in the beginning of December, as we can see today, or mid-December, we don't know that yet. And this is a phase one study that we will commence on. And phase 1A study is a mandatory study to do. It's about safety for the dose window that we would like to use for potential patients. We also have added, which we think is a fantastic thing, it is a phase 1B study, and that is a provocation study, meaning that we will stimulate healthy individuals and then we will add a drug to measure very specific uh, uh, medical targets that they utilize in a, a real critical situation. So we try to stay as real as possible and the readouts therefore uh, from this study will then guide us towards phase 2 to de-risk uh, the possibility of not finding the right pathway. And also this is a good argument to have an early kind of proof of concept for the partner discussions that we are uh, currently are engaging in. Uh, so this is where we are and if you look at the timelines we can expect a little after midsummer first preliminary results from the, the, the healthy study and then um, in the shift 23-24 the conclusion of the full study including the one beta study. So that's where we look. And phase two, you can calculate up to two years study, depending on how uh, efficient we will run this study. That's different ways to run these studies, and we will just have to return to you with some information about that as we progress as a company. And I was just also mention one more thing. We are, of course, looking at expanding our portfolio with new indications or pipelines, and that's something we're working on. Uh, we really want to build this company with the enormous knowledge that the team have harvested through the years. And talking about the team, we have a winning team here. Absolutely, they did a stellar job during 22 to deliver a fantastic package that we now are in clinic. Good job and I couldn't be happier as a CEO to have this team behind me and to tell me what actually is going on. So by that I say thank you for your attention and I go back to Cecilia. So, exciting times for Aptaham at the moment, and you are also conducting a rights issue. Why now? Why now? We thought it was good timing. Uh, we are in, in good economics, but we need to fill it up anyway to make sure we take our clinic study safely uh, past the goal line, of course. And uh, yeah, I mean, we have followed uh, the crisis here and uh, COVID uh, and all these things, and, and we have seen quite some big increases in costs in all the places, up to 500% sometimes. And we can do nothing else than just accept them. Uh, we negotiate very good, we put big pride in negotiation, of course, but there's always a limit. So uh, just to have a little height in the development uh, budget, uh, and also to make sure, as I just said, that we um, proceed uh, and, and finalize these two segments of study. So is it fair to say that the majority of the money you raise will go towards financing the study? Indeed it is, actually. Uh, and uh, the, the, the main part, yes. And then we will, of course, focus now, and we already do, uh, to plan for the f uh, phase two study, which is very important. And, and that's a, a continued iterative process with uh, KOLs that we now are speaking with and the KOLs involved in the study in Holland, where we are. So, and all this feedback will uh, uh, come down to a, a new... Uh, um, line of, of, of development in clinic for us, I hope so. So speaking of this study, could you tell us a bit more about the study setup, the study design that you have chosen? Well, uh, that's a uh, good question. I appreciate that and, and we are very proud of that because there was a lot of uh, regula regulatory package preparations to make this happen. Of course, I, don't, I wouldn't say it was easy, but the team made a stellar work to put all the results from preclinical studies, uh, the talk studies, safety studies, into a very solid package, which shows that we have a very safe drug. Hence, we took the step on doing an early proof of concept. Even if it's in healthy individuals, you can stimulate these individuals with a little toxin, have an elevation in inflammation, and then we study how our drug works on that. And what's special with our study, and we're very proud that I get get the approval for that is that instead of most studies doing this type of study is that you give a drug prophylactic that means before you induce the stimulation we stimulate first and then we are putting our drug, a drug into to action and that is to to uh, resemble an 
a real situation as possible and the readouts from, from those clinical models that we are seeking. Hopefully that will give us an early proof of concept and also de-risk the, the, the forward moving into clinical two and was a, what was the setting we will have there. And it's to be able to move faster perhaps and also to, to de-risk is the most important part I would say because the uh, phase two is a tough area to be in. So then finally, could you just summarize what the main goals for 2023 are? 2023, now we're running the clinic and we will follow that. And of course, we will tell our dear shareholders and other hangarounds and interest in Aptahem uh, where we have uh, preliminary results and where we are going about this. But it's mainly focused on on this clinic study now and uh, but also the team working on we have a lot of science uh, work uh, happening in the in the um, at, at up the home office uh, uh, with the team there and uh, the collaborators that we have in canada and in Erebro to mention a few and we're seeking more candidates or candidates but at least collaborators in this case and that will be a massive effort on business development without uh, saying anything more than that and, 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 and looking for those partners and maintaining those dialogues that we are engaged in. And of course, there is demand for this and that, and we try to deliver after best efforts to, to, to have their maintained interest. Sounds like you have an exciting year ahead of you, and thank you so much for coming here. Thank you for having me.